Okay guys, so here's where my progress ended up on Wednesday night. So this is Thursday night now that I've come in here and I'm revisiting it. Um, so you can see this side is essentially complete now. Um, I have the ridge over here by the sail panel. That is really hard to get the razor blade to fit into any of that channel nicely. There's a lot of dynamic curves going on over there. And I also feel like the way the paint is adhered in that section, it's really, it's really held down nicely, which is normally a good thing, but bad for me in this scenario because it's like the only section where it's that nicely bonded. So um, obviously I did the quarters, so I matched the red paint previously, so now, I have to try to blend that, which is a problem because there's no like aggressive body line. And I don't really, like I keep saying, I don't know how good of a match I'm gonna get, so I don't know how well I'll be able to blend that. Maybe I'll do a layer of red oxide paint before I do the blend, so maybe I can try to like, and I hate to say faux patina because everything else on here is pretty authentic, um, but I might need to try to do something creative to hide that line there. But as you can see, pretty much everything else um, is down. I didn't finish doing that side because I have to cut all of that out for the raw anyways and when I weld I'm gonna burn through some of the paint inevitably so again that will need to be blended to a certain degree and then I still need to do the front valence, the headlight buckets, and the grill surround so at some point I need to take the whole front end back apart which I'm not looking forward to but for now, I want to feel like I'm getting something done. Um, so I'm going to start wet sanding the primer off and I'm going to do a time lapse of that. You want to keep your sandpaper pretty wet because um, eventually you'll start getting the sanding dust here and it'll get kind of, I don't know, messy. It'll get muddy. Pasty. Pasty. I also keep a old microfiber here to like wipe it off as I go because sometimes it'll be a little hard to see once you start getting some build up. So with the 500 grit, it goes relatively quick to get that gray primer off. That's our cat complaining. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Here she comes, call her late. <laughs> have a guest. He's very concerned. Yeah. So ideally when you're block sanding like new paint, or wet sanding new paint, you don't really want to use your fingers because your fingers aren't very uniform. But in this case, we're sanding pretty lightly and this is not new paint and we're only trying to get this primer off. So we're just using our fingers here. Also folding up your sandpaper like this helps give you a little bit of rigidity in the paper so it's not just your fingers. And I'm also not applying a lot of pressure here. You don't want to dig in with your fingers and make a bunch of grooves. You just kind of want to lightly sand until you start seeing solid color come through. A lot of what's left at this point is either going to be low spots or just sections that had a higher buildup of primer. 
So to go off of what you said, you know, if you were to use a dura block here, you might not necessarily knock down those areas that have the primer left, but what you might do is you might thin out the surrounding areas. Yeah, so we're really just focusing on the low spots. Right, so this is traditionally, like this is very unconventional and this is kind of like a sin in like the auto body world, but because we're kind of resurrecting what was underneath the vintage burgundy paint job, we kind of have to go about it in an unconventional way. Yeah, if this was fresh paint and we were blocking clear coat, I would be using a block for this, or at least a sanding pad, something that your fingers won't make digits. But like this little spot here is a good example where it's seems like there is a ding in the fender maybe so there's a little low spot there so i'll take like the corner of the sandpaper and just like really lightly just focus on that one little low spot i'm putting barely any pressure on this see how that got that that little spot is a chip in the paint so it's not it but the low spot you pretty much got. There's also areas in this paint where they must have sanded this blue. And so you'll see where the primer is still in the sanding marks from that. So I'm also focusing on those areas, getting them sanding out those scratches. Just to give you an idea, so this is just the fender's dry and sanded. 
to give you an idea of what we're going for once it's buffed, I'll spray it with some soapy water. And when you wipe it down, you can really see the flake in that Caspian blue start to come through. The depth. And it's looking really good. That's just with water sprayed on it, but you really get the idea. Also, if you look at the reflection here, you can see Lee standing. Yeah, it's pretty straight. It. So I think this is going to come out really good once it's buffed. So finish this with 1200. Uh, it looks really good. I was gonna do it with 2000, but I don't have any 2000, so I guess 1200 it is. Um, but I got a new correcting pad, and I got uh, a 3M rubbing compound, so I think this should polish up just fine as is. Um, everyone uses a different polish. They all swear by something. This is just what I have, and I found that it works pretty good. Um, I've clear coated painted cars in here and wet sanded and buffed them using this stuff and they came out great. So that's what I got, that's what I'm using. That's also what we use at the restoration facility too. Mm -hmm. It's never really straight from the 3M kits because I don't know, they're just tried and true and like you can't really go wrong with them. And most of the time I end up, there's three steps with this. There's like a rubbing compound, a polish and like a glaze. And honestly, like, I use this the most, and most of the times, if I'm just, like, quickly cleaning something up, I end up not even doing the other two steps. But I'm sure it would come out even nicer if I did. But how I do this is I pu I'll put a few dots on the pad. If I can get any out of this. slightly differently so I some people might disagree with me but this is why my works this is what I'm doing.
So you could see there, there's an American flag on our wall. You could see Lee. Look at that. There's still some scratches in there from when they sanded this to paint it, it looks like. Yeah. But with some more wet sanding and some more compounding like this, you could get that out if you really wanted to. Honestly, I don't really want to go crazy with it. So one of the many reasons why we decided to go this route was because um, I didn't want to take this car down to bare metal and I still had a lot of rust and rot repair to do. Um, but I wanted to drive this car and I wanted something that I wouldn't be mortified to drive and I didn't want this to be a five-year project. So getting this pretty good, getting this to be like a five-footer and out, you know, when you're driving in the landscape and in sunlight, you're really not going to see nearly as many of these sanding flaws. Yeah, this stuff is really accentuated under like bright LED lights like this. Right. And Out in the sunlight, you usually barely see this. Yeah, especially with a dark color like this, it's really kind of hard to notice that. Um, so I really wanted something that looked cool, but I would be comfortable putting a lot of miles on. That's one of the things that Lee and I use with classic cars. We we drive our vehicles. Um, how many miles did you put on the Biscayne the past five years? We were just talking about this yesterday. In the time that I've owned that car and I've swapped it, I've probably put 50 or 60,000 miles on it. Yeah. And that's over probably eight years or so. Right. Um, so I'm not looking to go like so extreme with my car, but kind of looking for something that I can drive pretty much any time of year. So you're going to keep going? Yeah. All right. Okay, so Lee did a really quick pass on the uh, front half of the fender now. Um, and you can see it, it needs a little bit more time on the front, but I mean, the finish work is not necessarily, yeah. finish work is not necessarily the issue here. Um, it's just whether or not we were able to get this to polish back up and it definitely does. So you can see there's still a little bit of more sanding that we could do but reflection is totally there the depth totally there i really like the red oxide poking through i think that's kind of a cool look i love how that shined up just as glossy as, as the rest of the too. lacquer yeah like after doing this i don't see why people don't do this more often instead of just clear coating stuff yeah, clear coating stuff, I feel like nine times out of ten is the wrong level of execution. There's especially. A lot of stuff you could just wet sand and buff, buff it and end up with a result like that. And it's kind of sad because, I mean, we see a lot of people from our generation that are really into detailing, but you don't see people detailing and paint correcting single stage stuff anymore because no one. It's so much. You need to have so much more finesse because. While it can be forgiving in some ways, it's really difficult in others. Like it's a lot easier to burn through if you keep the, the buffing wheel kind of hot. Now granted, obviously, if we make mistakes, it's not necessarily the end of the world because we have a ton of flaws in the paint, but we were just talking about how like people love to do bare metal respray this, bare metal respray that. And the reality is like how many of these cars went through like an Earl Scheib paint job in the 80s and they did the same exact thing to this car. No prep aside from taking the hard edges and body lines down to bare metal, spraying primer and then just spraying whatever on top. When in reality, back in the day when they painted this car, probably all it really needed was like a wet sand, sand and, and buff. buff. But like that wasn't. No one knew. No that one back did that then. back they then. Just painted stuff for no reason. Yeah. Just because the car looked dull. And like none of that culture was like really like no one really explored like that level of like finish work. That wasn't. It wasn't really like a thing back then. I mean, think about like the technology for like random orbitals. I mean, how good could an orbital have been back then? Yeah. And like, if they were able to make one, like how heavy something like that could have been back then? So like, I get it, but you know, we're gonna keep pushing with this and I'm really excited to see what results we get. So 
so the top side I might have actually only done this was the first panel I tested and this might have only been done in 400 and I honestly can't remember at this point so you could see all of that grain is still there um, so we probably need to start back down at 600 and then jump up to 1200 and see if that improves which it will there's still some spots we're gonna touch up like behind the emblem here yeah I think like this ridge here coming off on this car so yep. we'll do behind the bumper when that happens but for now as far as testing to see if this even works I'd say this is a big success yeah this is a say. this is a pretty good sign that we'll be able to take the rest of the car to this we're gonna have to blend some paint down the bottom of the fender there bottom of quarter passenger sail panel that was a whole rust repair same thing on the driver's side so there's no blue under that red um and because i mean there's a little bit of a blend line there with that um body line going into the door but i don't plan on painting the door and the rocker so that's gonna be really difficult to get a good match and i'm kind of scared about that because if that doesn't end up looking right then the rest of this really cool patina is not gonna it's not gonna read the way i want it to read um, so I'm a little bit nervous about getting the right paint and getting the right paint match, um, and, and executing that in a way that that's going to look the way I want it to, but we'll see. Wow. It's looking good. That's a beautiful color. Yeah. So Marissa just took the bumper off today, so I gotta to touch that up where the bumper was covering. The whole front clip is coming off when we respray the engine bay, so we're kind of not going too too crazy with the details um with the front end tonight, but I really just wanted to give an update so you guys can get an idea of whether or not you guys think that this is a doable uh technique because obviously it is very cheap it's it's very cost effective process um but you time know consuming. yeah you you trade that for it being very very time consuming so um and of course that's a risk you always take you don't know what's going on you know beneath the paint that you can see um so there's always a little bit of a gamble but i mean again this is under harsh LED lighting in here right now, and it's it's looking pretty good. It's also a darker color too, so you're gonna see a lot more of the scratching um, under harsh lighting. But I kind of feel like once this is outside, you're not yeah, gonna. Yeah, in the sun, this is gonna look like ten times better. Yeah. Okay, so after all that work, we did a quick buff and paint correction on this side just to see how much it would shine up and what we were working with and whether or not we would burn through a lot of the paint uh, once it came time to buff it and to our surprise not too much I mean of course there were some thin areas like on the front here but let me see if I could there we go so you guys can see got a pretty good shine out of that now we weren't striving for perfection because of course there's no engine in it and I have all of this work left to do with the suspension and I have to take the front clip back off um, to repaint everything the way I want to do it so nothing is perfect right now and I don't want it to be because it's gonna get dusty again it's gonna sit in storage might get some more scratches so perfect is not 
is not what we're looking for right now and it never really was um, but it's got a pretty cool you know age to it of course you know the body line that was stripped down to bare metal it even seems like they used maybe a file on the body line over here because these I could actually feel with my finger and um, there's filler in there so either a file or I would say a DA but those aren't those aren't DA marks um, so you know some of the prep work on this thing was pretty rough um, and I didn't I didn't sand out the coves totally so I pretty I primarily just focused on the the top section just to see what we were working with um, and I didn't do the rockers at all and obviously I still need to blend where I did rust repair so it's not a perfectly oopsies it's not a perfectly blue car just yet on this side um, but that paint definitely has potential and of course I have to blend the quarter where they were rotted as well so I'm gonna have to get a really good color match if I can um, so nothing it's not it's not over yet and then once I take the front clip off to, oh there goes my towels once I take the front clip off I'll be able to get all of the vintage burgundy off of the rest of these it's just I can't really I don't really have a lot of wiggle room between these panels it's it's really tight in here so these got to come off and then I'll do them on a workbench or something uh, but this side this side's a lot more consistently blue now we didn't buff this side yet because I still need to weld in a patch panel on that fender and we still need to wet sand all of this this is probably this is probably four or six hundreds where we left off on this side. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like the matte unbuffed look a little bit better. But the good thing about single stage is that, um, you know, it can lose its sheen pretty quickly because there's no clear coat. So, you know, if it ends up going back to this, this finish at a, at a certain point, I think, I think I won't mind that, honestly. But it's definitely getting there. I mean, look at that reflection there. That's all snow. Look at that. So, there's a few dents here. And there was one, one here. Um, and there's a decent amount on the door, which honestly I'm not super stoked about. And that's another reason why I don't really care for it to be super reflective too, because that makes these these dents a lot more visible because you're seeing distorted reflections and there's a lot look at how smooth the fender looks from this angle right but when i go like this let's see here there's a decent amount i'm not going to call them they're not full-on waves There are little linear inconsistencies on that. And the fenders are really common to get those because the fenders on these cars are pretty thin for what they are. And obviously when you're working in the engine bay, you know, you're gonna have people leaning on them and you know people people hit the front of their cars a decent amount, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but there's no real shrinkage. Um some of the metallic is a little bit splotchy and I think most of that is just from areas getting getting close to being thin. It's, it's hard to see whether or not you guys are going to see this. I think, yeah, you will see this on the screen. So you can see here, there, there's some splotchiness. If you follow my reflective finger here, there's some, there's some splotches in this area. They're not super noticeable. Um, but again, you know, uh, like this fender, I'm pretty sure has two Caspian paint jobs on it. So that could be Caspian beneath coming through and making a, a darker area. I'm not too sure, but overall I'm excited. I just really wish I could see one side of the car all blue, but this is as good as I'm gonna get for right now. 
I have to get a custom tint made and then spray it out at some point, but I'm not spraying any of this out until I tackle this bear. So this is as good as I'm gonna get for now. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more on this, like and subscribe, um, and I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I move along with this and I find the patch panel for that other fender and that's it.